selection issues for Ireland? How do they fit all their world-class players into just a 23-man squad? That is the enviable task of Andy Farrell this week. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you throughout the championship and beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, today, I'm going to be looking at what I think the Ireland team will be to face England this coming Saturday at Twickenham. But before we go there, let's look at where they've come from. Last time out against Wales, I thought Ireland cruised to a victory, really. Uh, Wales causing problems. Wales were good at defence, but Ireland were just so patient on attack. And without ever really hitting top gear, cruise to a four-try win in the end. I think their performance level will probably need to be higher this time out against England. Um, Alco and I went into great detail about that game. I'll link that one up there so you can go and check out what we thought about that fixture. Uh, but let's get on to this one. Squad updates. Ireland have basically got everybody fit. Recording this Tuesday morning, everybody trained yesterday. So that's Oli Jaeger, Ian Henderson, Gary Ringrose, Hugo Keenan, all of them back on the pitch and training, looking like they're going to be fit to play this coming weekend. So excellent news for Ireland. They could not be any stronger. OK, here we go into what I think the team that will be selected for England is going to be starting with the forwards and the players that I think will keep their positions from the previous game. All of them, absolutely all of them. I think this is a beautifully balanced pack. I think it's got plenty of experience. It's got threat over the ball. It's got carrying the line out strong. It's literally got everything. So although there have been huge and amazing cameos from the bench from people like Conan, Ryan and particularly Baird, I don't think there's going to be any changes in this starting lineup. They've had the week to rest. I think there's, like I said, beautiful balance. So you look at the back row of Omani, that kind of old school grittiness, intelligence, getting in, doing the dirty work, Van der Fleer with his turnovers and, and carrying, and Doris, who's just a beautiful all-rounder. It's just a great balance in that back row. So, like I said, although several people have done well from the bench and starting against Italy, I don't think they'll stray anywhere from that. On to the backs, and there's some decisions to be made here. First of all, Gibson Park and Crowley nailed on as halfback partners, no question, as are the wingers, Lowe and Nash. Both have played really well this championship. We get interesting now into the centres because we've got Aki and Henshaw, who've both played really well. I've gone on record previously, I stand by it. I think Henshaw has been Ireland's best back of the Six Nations so far. But then you've got Gary Ringrose, who's potentially the best outside centre in the world. Coming back from a, not an in, you know, uh, a small injury layoff. So he's he's been out of action for a little while now. So does he get to come straight back in, in place of one of two players who've been playing really well? I don't know. That's a decision to be made. Uh, and also at 15, where Frawley was really good, really, really good last time out in uh, in place of the absent injured Keenan, who's recovered much quicker than expected, I think, from that knee injury. So does Keenan come straight back in or does Frawley keep his place after an excellent game last time out? This is what I think. I think they are going to have Aki and Henshaw both been playing really well, both on top form. I don't see any reason why you swap that, even though Ringrose is such an outstanding player. And then, of course, Hugo Keenan uh, comes straight back in. He's almost certainly the best fullback in the world at the moment, and it's only been a short injury layoff. So harsh and frawly, but that's what happens when you're part of a, a really world-class squad. Moving on to the bench. And I think this is where things get really interesting. So uh, the front row subs, Kelleher, Kelleher, Healy, same as before. I think Bielham comes back in for Jaeger. I think Bielham's been outstanding this championship and Jaeger did absolutely fine last time out. But first cap and, and you're just picking your best players here. So I think Bielham takes that in the number 18 jersey. Now then, 19 through 23. What do Ireland want? Um, where do they think this game's going to be won and lost? Where do they need the most reinforcements? Also, how do you get Gary Ringrose back playing again? Because if he's not going to start, which I don't think he will, then I think you do need to get him back playing. So if you have him on the bench and he goes 6-2, so you'd have Ringrose and Murray, 
who then is covering 10? I don't see anybody in that um, squad that could cover 10. So you may have to go for a 5-3 bench if you want to include Ring Rose on the bench. It all gets quite complicated. And if you go 5-3, that means one of Ryan, Baird or Conan misses out, none of which you deserve to miss out. But again, these are the selection headaches when you've got world-class players throughout your squad. It's a tricky one. I'm not convinced that what I think is going to be right for sure. Uh, but this is what I would go for. I think when you've got a world-class talent like Ring Rose, I think you have to get him back playing again as soon as you can. That means he has to be on the bench. If he's on the bench, and I think you have to have Frawley on there as well to cover 10 with Murray in the 21 jersey, which means, uh, and this is really tough, you know, Ryan Baird has got some real highlight moments when he comes on the off the bench, but he's up against two absolute quality um, forwards there in Ryan and Conan, both of whom have played really well during this championship when they've come off the bench as well. So, like I said, it's tough. There's definitely a case for having Baird in there ahead of Ryan, potentially. I think Conan definitely. Baird, Ryan is probably the decision there to be made. I'm going to go with Ryan, the specialist, you know, out and out. Hard nose second row because I think that's possibly what Ireland will need off the bench more in the later stages. But it's a very close run thing and it's amazing selection headaches for Andy Farrell to have. What do I want to, I want to see from this Ireland team as a neutral? Obviously, as a neutral, I just want to see them continue playing the incredible rugby that they're, they're now known for. I want to see them carry on this trend and get out there and take it to England keep hold of the ball, go through their phases and tire out this England defence, which is no doubt going to be ferocious on Saturday. That's what I think. What do you think at home? Is this the Ireland team that Andy Farrell is going to pick to take on Twickenham this weekend? Do you think it's good enough to beat England? I think most people do, but what about you? And are they going to be good enough to set a new longest ever Six Nations winning streak. They're currently on 11, tied with England. Have they make it to 12 this weekend and knock England off that crown? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. It helps other people find it and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play.